Welcome to Mars Hill United Methodist Church. All are welcome here without exception, and I am glad that you are worshiping with us this day. Um, it, we'll be doing a blessing with a, the, the prayer time for those who have brought food and gifts for those in our community that are in need, for neighbors in need. If you haven't brought yours to the church, we'll still get it where it needs to be. You can, you can bring it in, or you can send in a check for neighbors in need if you, if you can't do that, and we will still get it. There'll still be folks in need, so don't worry. You haven't missed the boat on that one. Our regular fellowship times are available our Thursday at 3 p.m. and our Sunday school at 9.45. And you can reach both of those things through our link on the website. That's for the virtual Sunday school. You can use the same link for both, both, both of those things. So I invite you to come and, and be in Zoom fellowship with us. Um, if, it, if it works for your schedule, we would love to be in fellowship with you. Now I invite you to open your hearts and your minds to be transformed by the living God this day. Amen. concerns and celebrations and uh, I will start with recognizing the fact that uh, that this is being taped on on Wednesday I suppose I'm breaking the third wall or whatever I'm not supposed to do that but I will let you know because my heart is very much right now in praying for our country and um, what has happened to the Capitol and I really hope by the time you are hearing this that that's just a new story that was a crazy thing that happened last week and, and and we've moved forward but even if that is the case if there isn't any other situations it's still a really big deal that it happened and it is um, our country needs prayers to come together to be united um, to move forward in, in, in a place of peace so I invite your you to continue to pray for our country. I, I put that on the on the list every week, and particularly this week, I hold it up. Um, and then let us also continue to pray for Pierre as he recovers and Phyllis taking care of him. Continue to pray for Chuck that the uh, chemo will shrink those tumors, and uh, for Carol 
caring for him and we uh, and also for Chuck's spirits as he continues through the, the challenge of chemo treatments. Continue to hold up Barbara and Ruth and Frida, Patricia and Jean and Cheyenne and Luke. Um, my friend Rebecca and her family concerns continue to, to hold her up. And I want to hold up our country and those who are sick with COVID and our healthcare workers. It has gotten to healthcare rationing in, in California now. And the toll that that takes on healthcare workers to have to determine who to bring into the hospital that stands a chance of being saved to have to make that call is a heart wrenching one. So I hold up the healthcare workers, all those who are sick, and uh, I pray for everyone to be careful and to remember that it is not just your life you gamble with when you do risky activities. It is affecting those who are, are trying to care for everyone. And so just try to keep that in mind and just pray for us to, to weather this challenge and for, for peace and healing. Let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come to you this day in this, this beautiful season. We come to you this day carrying the burdens and challenges of the week. We come in the, in the heart-wrenching pain of, of the challenges in our government, those who are suffering from COVID, and the healthcare workers that are struggling so hard to care for them. And Lord, we, we hold this up to you, that your care is greater than our ability to know what to do. That your strength and wisdom is great and we ask that you bestow it upon us and our country and to strengthen those who are struggling. Lord, especially this day, we hold up to you, Pierre, Phyllis, Chuck, Karen, Barbara, Ruth, Frida, Patricia, Jean, Cheyenne, Luke, Rebecca and family, all those who are sick and all those who are mourning. Let your blessing be upon us all. We ask this. In the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen
So we'll pick back up on our children's sermon now. And uh, there we go. We'll pick back up on our children's sermon now. Today we are celebrating both the baptism of Jesus and Epiphany. And so with Epiphany, we have to have our Magi finally make it to, to give honor to Jesus. And the shepherd actually made his way back to the fields that night, had to, he was working guy, had to get back there to the fields. And our baby Jesus that is here is actually kind of perfect because we know that the, the shepherds came the night of with a newborn, and we know that the Magi came when it was about two. So here we have uh, one that's about one, and I think, you know, it sort of splits the difference. So it's sort of perfect for what we're doing. And we have a little miracle ladybug here too. So that's that's gotta be a Christmas miracle too. So here we have our Magi after their very long trip now, honestly, we don't know that it took them two years to get there because they probably did some discerning upon the rising of the star to figure out what they needed to do and made preparations for the trip. So they probably didn't walk for two years, but it was a journey. And now they have made their way to the Christ child, bringing him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Frankincense was uh, a, an expensive thing that was used in worship. It was an incense that uh, would be burned, and you would see the smoke that would rise up, and it was considered a way to connect heaven and earth. Myrrh was an expensive oil that was used in burial at times and foretold that Jesus would die for this ministry that he was born for. These were also just expensive gifts. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh were, were gifts that showed honor to the Christ child. These foreigners, these people that followed a strange and different religion came and they are the ones in the Gospels. They are the ones to recognize how important Christ is when he was still a toddler. So we recognize this as we can bring together our, our final story for our Christmas gathering uh, on the altar there and give thanks to the children everywhere they are that they can celebrate the story every year. And we all, as children of God, can remember our childhood and remember our belonging to God as we remember the story every year. Now I would like for us to look at the scripture reading instead for the baptism, no, not the uh, epiphany reading this time. The baptism begins us into Mark's Gospel, which is my favorite gospel. So I am I am happy for us to be in this. And this is the gospel that actually begins by naming itself a gospel. Just from the get-go, the thesis statement for Mark tells us that this is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And in this opening section, we begin Mark four Mark chapter one, verse four. Mark is not concerned with birth stories or, or childhood stories. Mark is in a hurry and jumps right into the meat of the story that is the baptism, the point that Mark's, that uh, Mark uses to mark the start of Jesus's ministry. Verses four to 11, hear now the word. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him 
and were baptized by him the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. And I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you our rock and our redeemer. Amen. To be completely honest with you, which I like to be, I'm in a bit of a quandary preaching today. I'm rather disturbed by the events of the day. And I don't really feel equal to how to preach to them. I don't really know what to do with the, with the images of seeing the Capitol overrun, with people going into the inner chamber with flash bombs and tear gas happening at our Capitol. It seems like scenes that would come from another country's troubled election, not ours. It seems as though we are very much in a troubled time. It doesn't feel that Christmas Eve, that celebration of the epiphany and of the baptism, I'm not feeling celebratory today. The thing is though, Jesus didn't come into a world that was easy and that was full of celebration. We hear lovely stories of celebration in the birth narrative, but those coming at his birth were mere shepherds. And in Matthew's gospel that we look at with epiphany, we do have this lovely story of, of, of bringing him these gifts, but the story turns dark right after that. If we are worried about someone trying to cling to power and not being willing to let it go, imagine when Jesus came, the one trying to cling to power was willing to slaughter all the children to and under in a town. Now the Bible times were darker times. We are not used to seeing political violence, or violence at the same levels, at least if you are who are listening are, are white and middle class, you probably haven't seen as much violence as it feels as though we are seeing now. And it, especially around, around politics, they may have been boring and feel like and frustrating that nothing's happening, but they don't usually feel like everything's changing and crumbling and frightening the way they do right now. And certainly the number of people dying of COVID every day is staggering. We are not used to this number of people dying of disease. But the biblical time in which Jesus was born into is a time where people knew a lot of death from disease. And people knew a lot of violence from, pol from political turmoil. 
Maybe this moves us a little closer to the Christmas story. I know I, know I, I missed so much having uh, our regular worship services during Advent and Christmas Eve and, and seeing the gathered people holding the candles and singing softly. I missed that very much. And, and I've said in past years that Christmas wasn't so peaceful and joyous and candlelit as we think of it as, and maybe that is a blessing of this year, is it feels very much in our face that it is not peaceful and candlelit and full of carols in the same way now. Now we still certainly don't know the situation as bad as it was that Christ came into. It's just different than what we're accustomed to. So I offer that we take comfort in what Christ offers in coming into the world that he did. In coming into our world as he continues to do through the Spirit. So let's look at this baptism. Water is a powerful symbol. Water is a powerful thing. Jesus came up in an arid land where water rights and water challenges were a big deal. Now, if you've lived somewhere, or if you're living somewhere right now and watching this online where, where it is an arid land and you understand water politics, for many of us here in this part of the country, we, we don't really. I've, I've seen it when I was a missionary, but we don't really see it so much here. But water and the rights to it were very, was a very powerful political thing. And water is just a powerful force. I mean, if we think about it, we think about the idea that, that rocks are far more powerful and sturdy than water, but really, water is the thing that carved the rocks into the beauty of the world around us. If you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, I mean, if you haven't, I suggest that you should. It is truly awe-inspiring, especially to look down from the northern rim and to see the depth of the descent that was carved from water over time. And thinking about water, I also think about the first time I was preaching at this church, and I had the children's sermon, and I asked the kids about what they thought about when they thought of water, and I remember Eli's response that made me change my sermon that day and saying that water is the universal solvent. So if you're listening, Eli, remember that. That was good. Those were good words about water. And, and if you're not a science, science geek, that God is excited about that as I do, I'll tell you what universal solvent means is that this is the thing in science where it will, things will dissolve into water. Most things, that's universal, to dissolve into water and become part of water. And this is the challenge with clean water. When you have water that goes through industrial waste, this is why we worry about uh, making sure our waterways are clean and safe, while we have water treatment plants to remove things that might be challenging. That's why it's so easy to put fluoride in the water to help our teeth, because these things go into the water and become a part of it undiscernible when we look at it, both good things and bad things can become part of the water. Water is powerful. Now Jesus came to the River Jordan where John was baptizing. And in Mark's Gospel, we don't get a sense that John knew anything was special about Jesus ahead of time. Now we have these conversations in the other Gospels where John recognizes Jesus upon his entry. 
Here, we have John simply recognizing someone greater is to come, but not necessarily having eyes to recognize it was Jesus when he came up. In fact, we would assume that this voice from God was something that Jesus experienced and not all those around him because John asks the question later on, is Jesus the one we were waiting for? Is, is this what it's supposed to look like now? And, and just want to, I want to know that. So it seems that he didn't understand it from that day. John was there to baptize any that came, to baptize them for forgiveness of sins, and to baptize them to repent, to turn around, to redirect their lives to be for God. When Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were torn apart. Sounds like a very violent thing, but not torn apart in destruction, rather opened in a way that let the Spirit in to Christ in a new way. Because the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. That same Spirit, less dove-like in the next passage, drives him into the wilderness. That same Spirit drives him through his ministry. That same spirit drives him to live so faithfully that he gave his life up, being so faithful to the spirit. A dove seems a bit like a misnomer when you think of it that way. The spirit, both gentle and powerful, came, though, and Christ heard at least God's words. This is my son with whom I am well pleased. Think for a moment on those words. I think for all of us, we would love to hear from our, our father words like that. This is my son. I am well pleased. And if you are a father listening and you haven't told your child that, son or daughter, I invite you to do it because it is a powerful thing. Even more powerful to think of that blessing coming from God. That, I think, for the Christian disciple is the goal that we live our lives to, to come to the end that God might tell us that he was well pleased with our journey. That's the motivation to keep us learning and growing and working and doing the things that are hard in times that are hard. To follow Jesus to be one that is well, that God is well pleased with. And that moves us from Jesus' baptism to think of our own, that they are linked. In this sense of the powerful water that is the universal solvent that takes in those elements of the things that it rushes through, it also in the waters of baptism. It holds on to all those baptisms that have been there before us. Our parents, our grandparents, our forerunners in faith that we do not know their names. All the way back to Christ. Holding a part of that in it as well. The waters of baptism are powerful. 
And I want to remind you of your baptism vows. Now, if you've not been baptized before, I'll tell you what they are. And if you were baptized as an infant and weren't there to take, the, to take those vows yourself, but they were taken for you, Maybe you were confirmed in the faith later on and you heard those vows. Or maybe like me, I was confirmed a little too young to actually take them very seriously. But I'm going to offer them to you today because I feel like we've got a challenging journey ahead of us right now. A challenging journey to walk through the end of this pandemic. A challenging journey to be a place of light in a world that really needs it right now. Uh, a voice of love and a place where hate and division seem to be reigning right now. I want you to remember your baptism. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Think about that. You're incorporated into God's acts of salvation. All the biblical stories, the slaves coming out of Egypt, the the, the slaves being, being coming out of slavery in the United States. All the journey of God's holy actions in the world, you get incorporated into in this act. These are the vows, which either, if you are baptized, if you're not, that is great too, I'm glad that you were here. But if you were baptized, these were the vows that were said for you, at least if it was in the Methodist church, or if you were confirmed. Feel free to respond to them if you wish to remember and, re, and reignite those baptismal vows. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world. I've said these vows many times, and they feel different to me this year. Guess the spiritual forces of wickedness and evil in this world feel more real to me now. And when I say that, I'm not trying to point to people and that person is evil or wicked, and I am against them. But the lure and power of evil to seduce people to do things, even when they're not trying to be wicked or evil or recognize that it is evil that is seducing them to acts that are terrible, It is a true calling we are given. Do you accept it? Do you accept the power that Christ is offering you 
that you might make a difference in the midst of this world. Because the good news is, it is here for you. We need it. We need to be faithful representations of God's love and power in the world this day. In the midst of anything, that is good news. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we stand before you to repent of our sins, to repent of the ways that we have been blind to the pains and hurts of others, to where we have blind, been blind to our own arrogance and, and our own blindness to, to see your action, to see your calling in the world. We repent of the ways that we have turned a blind eye, even when we know that we have been needed because we were afraid or, or scared that there was not enough of us, that we undercut ourselves and we undercut what you could do through us. Lord, we lay ourselves open to you. For you know our weaknesses and the ways we have fallen short of your calling. And you know the injuries of our life that have led us to them. Lord, in silence we lift this to you, that you might shower us with your grace and renewing power. As you breathe, I invite you to envision this time of water flowing through you. Powerful, living water that carries with it the strength of God, that carries with it the strength of the ages. Let it flow through you. Let it wash away any place that we have, have failed, any guilt, any challenge from the past. Let it wash that away and let it quench our thirst and empower us for God's work in the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Go in the peace and power of Christ. Carry the light of Christ into a world of darkness. Carry the love of Christ into a world that is crying out in need. Go in peace and power. Amen.